This is an urgent plea to the new UK Prime Minister. Please, new UK Prime Minister, read the room of great unrest, political division, of anger, and be strong and bold in your leadership. Too much in recent times, politics has been a popularity contest or going for leaders of charisma and charm. But we need leaders of strength and substance. And our new UK Prime Minister is going to have to do unpopular things in order to reclaim our great nation. Inflation must be controlled and the measures to do that will be unpopular. In fact, I've spent a good amount of time thinking about the things I believe the new UK Prime Minister could do to reclaim our great nation. And I'd love your thoughts on this. And the first one is to immediately sort out the energy issues, the energy cap increases. And I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, maybe you do. I don't know why the energy companies are making record billions, yet the cap is going up and up and up and up and many of the population's bills are just unaffordable. I don't know whether there's just massive investment in those firms into the UK that the government are scared of losing. This was what Trust said, but do I trust that? I don't know if there's a lot of donations and financing into the government coming from these massive energy firms. But our new Prime Minister must be strong and must reduce energy prices. Otherwise, they ain't going to last very long. Energy caps are there to protect the people and the people are not being protected. I believe there must be a windfall tax. I'm not a fan of overtaxation. I think taxes are already too high. And I believe that firms and individuals and entrepreneurs should be supported and left alone to make maximum fair profits. But right now, whether it's the energy firm's fault or not, the profits are not fair. It is not fair that the energy companies can make record billions when probably a third of the population or more can't afford their bills. So I believe the, the big energy firms, because the smaller energy firms in the middle are getting wiped out. It's just the massive corporations are making billions in record profits. I believe a windfall tax needs to happen. Even if it's only short term, that's OK. But you're supposed to govern government. And right now you're not stepping in enough and intervening. I'm not actually a fan of massive intervention. I like companies and firms and entrepreneurs and small business owners to be able to trade relatively intervention free. Right now, though, more intervention is required, certainly in the fuel, in the energy. And I believe a windfall tax needs to happen and it needs to happen really quickly. I would love your thoughts, by the way. I've got a few more. A couple of things I'm going to say here I can't believe I'm actually saying but I think it's important to say. And please do all let me know what you think um, should happen and is going on. OK, now this is one thing that's really confused me. Why keep just tax, 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 when surely a better way to create revenue for the country is increase growth, increase production, increase economic output and GDP? So my plea to the new UK Prime Minister is to stop the tax grabs, stop the tax raids and start creating incentives, subsidies and grants for production, innovation and hiring. You fuel and fire up the economy, not by taxing the people who fuel the economy. You fuel and fire up the economy by creating growth and you help growth with um, less intervention. 
So that I believe the government aren't intervening enough in the energy sector, sector, but are intervening too much with taxation and stifling small businesses. So let's have some incentives, some subsidies, some grants and some support for production, creation, innovation, disruption, for um, hiring people and fire up that economy. And then you can have a share of that increased money. The next thing I think is, I mean, the next thing is the NHS. I think that everyone seems to now agree the NHS is pretty ruined. Uh, I think it's unretrievable how many hundreds of billions would be required to sort it out. So I believe that it's important to um, change the NHS system, whether you privatise it, whether you make it an insurance based system. I'm no major expert on that, by the way, but I think it's pretty obvious now that the NHS doesn't work. Uh, And I think it needs to be radically overhauled and reformed. Insurance based system, privatisation. Let's look at some options. The next thing I think this is really important is we must get better financial education at our root school system. There is not enough education and knowledge about budgeting, about debt, about money management. And that needs to start from the root cause to bring better education and knowledge because there's too much of a divide between the rich and the poor. And you can't blame the rich for that. The government are there to govern our country. So we need better education at root. Really, really important. Um, And yeah, it's going to take time to come through. This is why the leader needs to have vision. This is why the leader needs to be strong. The next thing I think this is really important is we need to reduce the size of the government. The public sector is too big. It's too bloated. It is draining too much of our financial resources and it is taking too long. For example, the tax code. The tax code is thousands of pages long. Imagine if they just went flat rate, 20 percent tax gun. (laughs) There's too many people feeding off too many small slices and taking up too much of our budget. Paula has said, take your blinkers off. Well, if you let me know what you think's going on, I'm open to the discussion. Let's have a chat in the comments. What do you think the next prime minister should do? What do you think is going on? Educate us. <laughs> OK, next thing I believe is you've got to get more people back to work. This is not going to be popular, but I do believe there's more people being supported in the benefit system than need to be. I do believe there's probably a lot of people gaming the benefit system. And I think I'm not saying just, you know, throw them out in the streets. I'm saying we've got to educate those people who are getting subsidised by the government. We've got to help people to learn and earn. And we need, I believe, much less support on benefits. And we need to give them work and teach them to work and get them into work. And that will have a virtuous cycle effect of kickstarting the economy and helping with employment. Someone else has said here it's deliberate. Paula, it's all very well saying take your blinkers off and it's deliberate. There is no information there. So if you want to tell us what you think is really going on, by all means do. But um, yeah, take your blinkers off. See what's really going on. It doesn't help anyone. (laughs) Um, It's like me saying do more. Yeah, what? Do more of what? So let me know what you think in the comments. Don't be shy. Let's go. (laughs) Okay, so I believe we need to get people back to work. And I'm not just saying, you know, just stop all the benefits and kick them all onto the streets. I'm saying educate them, support them and get them back to work. Okay, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm going to say it because I think it's important right now. I think that the tax system is a bit unfair, whereby the small business owner, the middle class, the working class, the entrepreneurs, they're being taxed far too much. Yet the massive corporations aren't being taxed enough. So I saw the um, I think it was BP made six point four billion, but only paid one hundred and twenty seven million in corp tax. I think that's three percent. That needs to go up. Definitely needs to go up. So I think the massive corps need a higher tax. I'm not saying overly tax them. We want the jobs. We want the investment. And I'm sure they wouldn't mind paying a bit more tax. And they're only um, leveraging tax loopholes that exist in the first place. So I'm not really blaming them. But uh, definitely, I believe that the massive corps need to be taxed a bit more so that the middle class and the entrepreneur and the small business owner, which creates most of the economic revenue, by the way, they need to be taxed less. Okay, again, Paula, you've said, well, economic forum are not a conspiracy theory anymore. Give us more information. (laughs) Um, Yeah, of course, if you're registered disabled and you really are, um, then, you know, I think it's fair that you get support and funding. But I think there's a lot of people gaming the system. I know many people won't have the balls to say that, but I do because I see it. Um, And that's where it is tightening up. 
Uh, and then the final thing, which we should all do, but it's a plea to the government, support the small business owner more, support the entrepreneur more. I've spoken to people in government who say that there's a disdain towards the small business owner, the entrepreneur within government, uh, and there shouldn't be. They should support and subsidise and encourage and incentivize and create grants uh, to help people start a business, to help people scale a business, to pr protect that business, you know, as it gets hard, because it, it does. And uh, because those small businesses, those six million odd, they fuel and fire up the economy. And of course, at the moment, the economy is just ash ashes. <laughs> We're not blowing on it hard enough to fire it up. So let me know what you think the next UK prime minister should do. I believe they need to be strong and bold. I believe they need to have future vision. I believe they need to be prepared to make some people very unhappy. Um, I believe they immediately need to sort the energy crisis out because they have the power to do that. I believe that they need to win full tax the massive... Um, energy firms, even if it's only short term, just get control of it. I believe they need to get control of inflation. And there's multiple things in addition to putting up interest rates that they're going to need to do. And that's going to be quite unpopular. I believe that they need to create incentives and subsidies for production, grants, get us hiring, get us innovating again. Um, they need to privatise the NHS or at least reform completely Start again with the NHS because I think it's ruined now. We're paying for it, except we can't really use it. It's like having a, a, a local shop with your groceries, but it's never open. Or there's a massive queue and you can never get in to buy your groceries. It might be there, but it, it doesn't function. I believe there must be better financial education and knowledge, especially around debt, debt and money management in schools at grassroots. I believe the size of the government needs to be dramatically reduced because it's bloated. It's costing too much money. It's just a massive paper trail. Like the tax code is just, apparently the tax code is thousands of pages. You could easily simplify. Here's the thing, within their government, they don't want to do that. They don't want to simplify anything, do they? Because then it costs them all their jobs. Um, I believe we need to get more people to work. And I, I think that the benefit system needs a bit of a look at. Um, I believe that we need to tax some of the bigger corporations a bit more. Not overdo it. We don't want to send them away, but more. And I believe we need to do much more to support the small business owner the entrepreneur, the startup. Um, so let me know what your thoughts are uh, in the comments. Mary said, I disagree on most of your positions. NHS is a priority. Well, I've said that it is, so I think we agree there. The amount of benefit fraud is negligible. Don't believe that. Come on, Mary. Really? <laughs> nah, nah. And by the way, I didn't even mention benefits fraud, did I? I mentioned we need to get more people on benefits back to work by supporting them and educating them. It's a lack of education. It's a lack of resourcefulness, not a lack of resources often. So, yeah. Um, all right. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Paula, I appreciate you trying to let me know. I just need to get a little bit more detail, a little bit, bit more specifics. You know, I hear a lot of people on my lives, you know, because my lives have got millions of views. And people are saying things like World Economic Forum, Charles Schwab, Great Reset, New World Order, Own Nothing, Be Happy, Illuminati, Cabal, um, Rothschilds. You know, they say all these things, but they're like, they're sound bites. And then, and then you say, WF, look it up. Yeah, I know what it is. Do you also know a lot of the good that it's doing? You probably don't. So um, anyone who wants to share, please share and please challenge me. I love discussion and debate. But I just want to see some people just with a little bit more research, I guess, a little bit more proof. Like a lot of people say, oh, there's a few families ruling the world. No one can name them. No one has ever named them. I even asked David Icke that. Couldn't name them. So look, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm not, I'm not denying that there could be some shenanigans going on. Definitely not. I mean, I, I cannot understand why um, these massive energy corps, corporations who are making record profits, I can't understand why they haven't had a windfall tax. And it makes me think there must be something going on behind the scenes that's less than pleasant, shall we say. But I've got no proof. So I can discuss it, but I've got no proof. So, you know, I'm not going to go and directly say it. So anyway, they're my thoughts on what the, the new prime minister should do. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please also hit the share button because I think we should all have a voice, shouldn't we? Here's, it's a bit disappointing that the new prime minister, we had no, um, we had no vote. Like, how fucked is our political system that the new prime minister, we didn't have a say. We, the people, did not have a say. It's absolutely crazy. So maybe even the political system as a whole needs a rethink. Let me know what you think on my points. I've covered, what, nine or ten there. 
Um, I think that the government is in massive debt. Well, I know it is. It's two trillion, apparently, 2.2 trillion, which means billions in interest. Uh, the governments are never going to get their um, debt down, are they? I mean, they're just in continual deficit. The way governments used to run is deficit, surplus, neutral. Deficit, surplus, neutral. But it's just deficit, 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 deficit. And the problem with the growing deficit is the interest payments grow and therefore the continued tax burden grows. Um, so the government are just in total debt. And I don't even know if they're going to be able to do anything about that other than go bust or continually print more money, which is just going to cost you more money. But we don't have a say in the person that comes and runs our nation. So to me, that seems crazy, 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 crazy. Yes, I do think we pay way too much tax, Mikey. We do. Corp tax could go up to 25 percent when income tax is 38 percent, when national insurance is best part of 10 percent. Um, you pay employ employers and employees. You've got the pension contributions. You've got the VAT. You've got the sales taxes on everything you buy. Some things are double and triple tax, like food, uh, like so fuels, definitely double taxed. It's too much. Yeah, it's far too much. How can you make any money? And then when you can't make any money, you can't spend any money. The, the, um, it has a knock on effect in the economy because as all these prices go up, everyone's just going to stop spending and then it's going to have a, a vicious cycle effect on the economy again. Surely this like this is just basic economics. Surely, surely they've got to have some people in government that understand this. Anyway, look, I do want to help. I don't just, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that Sunak and Truss and Johnson Rishi, Boris and Liz, I'm sure they're not watching this video. Maybe they, maybe they could. I'm sure they're not. But if you share this, then maybe more people will. And we, let's have our own discussion on the, um, in, in the comments. Mikey, you've said it's ridiculous. People on benefits are literally better off. I, I drove into the town centre in Peterborough. I went and got a coffee and I sat down. And because I drove in in a nice car, a few people started to talk to me. And um, two people who live on the streets came and talked to me. I just started chatting to them. Uh, and I said, you know, what, what do you think about trying to um, get some work? And he said, there's no point because I earn less than getting the benefits. But he actually said that to me. He said, there's no point working. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Um, all right. So I'm gonna, I, I want to help you. So um, just write yes in the comments and I'll give you some financial resources as a gift from me. Um, no fee, no charge. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you at least 21 ways to save half your salary and costs, a, a long article I wrote specifying each 21 points. Also, I'm gonna give you some video workshops on maybe how to create extra income streams, on maybe how to invest in assets that produce income, how to protect your cash, how to beat inflation. And then on a weekly basis, I'll send you my, what, what I call my Rob's resources, which are financial resources. For example, I just interviewed a billionaire, brilliant interview, you'd get that. So if you just type yes in the comments, just type yes, I'll make sure that I reply to you and I share a link with you and you'll get free access to 21 minimum ways to save as much money as you can, ways to invest, ways to beat inflation um, and ongoing weekly resources in your inbox, tools directly to make, manage and master money, to beat the cost of living crisis, to not just survive, but thrive. And it's all as a gift from me, by the way. All you have to do is type yes. I can see Soraya has typed yes. I can see Nikki has typed yes. So just type yes, that's a gift from me. Um, no strings attached. You will need to just pop your email address in because then I can send you them each week. I've got about seven resources already loaded up to send you and you'll get them immediately. Um, Paula has said, turning off now, you are not interested in what we're saying, but Paula, I've just responded to four of your comments. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> um, I'm very interested in this discussion. Um, I'm interested in a bit more depth. You know, I've tried here to go in a bit more depth. I've spent some time thinking about the eight or nine things I think our country could do better. I've opened it up to discussion. I've even given free gifts and resources. What more do you want me to do? <laughs> do you want me to start handing out hundred dollar bills? Do you want me to get naked and do a dance? Do you want me to come over and bring you some money? You've got to help yourself here. Anyway, just I can see loads of you typing yes. Amanessi, Stephen, Colin, Stephen, Mikey. Tom, Adam. So just type yes in the comments. I'll give you all these financial tools and resources as a gift from me. I think you get about seven immediately. And then, um, you know, a weekly basis, I do a send out. And um, yeah, there's quite a lot on them, actually. There's normally three or four resources on each send. So um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. They are my thoughts on this is my plea to the new UK prime minister. And um, please share this because I think we should all have our say. We didn't have our say. We didn't get to have our say. We did not have a choice of who our next um, prime minister was. And that's wrong. But we should have a say. 
And if you have your say here, give me as much information as you can. I don't mind you challenging me. As you can see, I've interacted with some of you and I don't mind being challenged. And then also share this with as many people as you can. Thanks for tuning in. Please, please, new UK, new UK Prime Minister, be strong, be bold, think long term, sort the energy crisis out, sort the inflation crisis out, win full tax on the big energy firms, privatise the NHS, and um, or re sort the NHS out anyway. There's other models. Create incentives and subsidies and grants to start and scale a business and for um, employment. Uh, reduce the size of the government. Reduce the size of the people on benefits. Create better education in school and for people on benefits. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Hit the share button and remember this. Put yes in the comments if you want the financial tools and resources from me. And if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.